Okay. Canada's economy 5-1. And so I'd ask the question, what is economy? And the response was again, how people work with their money. Yeah, it deals with money. And the way that we are going to be dealing with the term economy is basically, it's basically how people make money. How do people make money? What kind of jobs do they have? How people make money. That's what we will be concerned with when it comes to economy. What kind of jobs do people have there? How do people make money? <clears throat> and we'll be talking about that in every country that we look at for the most part. Now, Canada has a special kind of economy that was listed in the reading. Anybody remember the name of it? The abbreviation was FM. FM. Not like on the radio. Anybody remember? I know it was a couple of days ago. Okay, it was called a free... Anybody know now? the same kind of economy that we have in the United States. It is called a free... Okay, I'll give it to you. Free market economy. It's called a free market economy. There are many kinds of economies in the world. There are some where the government starts all the jobs, starts all the businesses, controls everything. And then there are others, such as the free market economy, where it's not the government starting businesses, but rather the people, individuals starting businesses. People start businesses and they run their businesses. That is a free market economy. And so Canada has a free market economy. Is that how it works in the United States? Individual people start companies and they run them. Anybody here have a parent that has their own company or their own business? Yes, we live in a free market economy. Basically, where the people start and run businesses. It's not the government runs everything or the government owns everything. Our government does own certain things and does run certain things. Canada does too they actually have more government control than in the United States. The Canadian government controls more things than the United States government does. Here are just a few examples of what the government controls in Canada that might be different than what happens in the United States. The first one is that the government runs health care in Canada, so everybody gets free health care. You can go to the doctor in Canada and not have to pay anything. You get your surgeries paid for. Now, this is something that is a debate in the United States today, whether or not we should do something like that, or, or if we should modify it somehow, or whatever. And there are pros and cons. There are positive ideas about this and there are negative ideas about this. We're not going to get into that. I'm just going to show you that Canada's government does take a larger role in the health care program than in the United States. They also control the prices for medicine. Oftentimes a prescription in the United States might run $90 for a month. But in Canada it might be 30 Again, more government control. Good or bad, that's your opinion. We're not going to get into that. Canada, the government also owns television and radio stations. For example, here we have NBC, CBS, ABC, and they are all private companies. In Canada, those big network types of stations, they're owned by the government. The government makes TV programs. The government makes 
sci-fi programs and sitcoms and everything else, just like our private companies do, Canada, the government runs them. Not all of them, but some of them. That's an overview of Canada's economy in general. Any questions on that so far? Okay, and let's take a look at Canada's economy by regions because in the United States, do people in every state have the same jobs? For example, do the people in Arizona have the same kind of jobs as the people in Minnesota? No. We have lots of farmers growing wheat and corn in Minnesota. Do they do that in Arizona? Why not? <laughs> Why don't they? Because the land is different, the climate's different, and so every region has its own kind of economy, its specialization. And so we're going to look at the different regions of Canada and what their economies are like. And we're going to focus on the southern part of Canada because that's where most of the people are. So, Canada's economic regions. And we're going to start in the east and move our way west. Canada's economic regions. So we'll start in Eastern Canada. On the map I colored in red for the areas that we're going to deal with. Newfoundland and Labrador, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. What do they all have in common? What do you think one of their main industries, one of their main ways of making money is based on their geography, based on where they're located? What is it going to be? Fishing, yes. Why do you think fishing? They're close to the ocean. Look, they have long coastlines. And so let's see if fishing is going to be one of their main industries. In Eastern Canada, you have the Atlantic coast, yes. The ocean is right there, just like was pointed out. Traditionally, historically, throughout many years, fishing has been very important to the area. Traditionally, fishing has been very important, just like you guessed. But there's a problem. With new technology, with modern equipment, you can go out and you can get more and more fish at one time. What is that eventually going to do to the amount of fish available to be caught? What is that going to do? Okay, it might run down on the availability, yeah. The amount of fish goes down, are people going to be able to make money on it anymore if there aren't enough fish? Yes? No? Maybe? Wake up! No! Good! But, so, as a result of what is called overfishing, it's been decreasing. People have been changing jobs. They've been trying to change the jobs that people do because it's very hard to make a living focusing just on fishing. So one thing that they start to do, and one thing that's growing rapidly in this region of Canada, is something called manufacturing. Big long word, manufacturing. Five syllables, ooh, big long word. Anybody know what that means? What is manufacturing? Manufacturing. Building products to be sold. Very good answer. Yes. 
Basically, I'm going to even shorten that down a little bit, and we're going to make this manufacturing word really simple to understand. It's making things. Making things. Manufacturing is making things. It's not growing things. You don't make a corn cob. Making things. And yes, those things are meant to be sold. So manufacturing is one of the ways they are changing from fishing to other jobs. What do we have on that east coast? Based on yesterday's notes and your maps, what's on the east coast there? That's divided by the St. Lawrence River Valley. What did we have there along that east coast? Yes. Mountains. And what do you have inside a mountain? What can you do inside of mountains as you dig? Mining, yes, very good. They have mining that they're developing in this region because of the mountains. There's one last industry, one last way of making money there. And if you think about it, think about its geography. On the Atlantic coast, lots of coastline there. Minnesota has lots of coastline too, but it's not on an ocean. But one of Minnesota's main industries is also a growing industry in eastern Canada. Can anybody figure it out? Tourism, yes, going to the ocean. Now, you can't really swim there that well because it's a little cold, but going out independently, going out fishing, looking at the scenery, things like that, yeah. Tourism is growing in Eastern Canada because of its location. That is Eastern Canada. Traditionally it was fishing, but it's changing now to manufacturing, mining, and tourism. So, Eastern Canada is done. Let's move a little bit to the west. And we have Quebec and Ontario. And notice, this is correctly spelled with this little accent over the E. That is the correct spelling for Quebec. And I'm saying Quebec because that is the way it is pronounced. In Quebec, they do not say Quebec. It's Quebec. Repeat after me. Quebec. 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 Good. And so we're going to look at the economic region of Quebec and Ontario, and we will start with Quebec. Quebec is Canada's largest province in land area. It is the largest province in terms of its land. It is huge. I'll bring up a map. Boing. That is all Quebec. Now I'm going to circle where most of the people live. Most of the people in Quebec live right there. But it is a huge area that goes up into the Canadian Shield area up here, as well as being at the mouth of the St. Lawrence River. So, Quebec. One quarter of all Canadians live in Quebec. One quarter of all Canadians live in Quebec. One quarter of all Canadians live in Quebec, the province of Quebec, not Quebec City. Now, anybody know who first settled Quebec? What country from Europe first went into the area around Quebec? Yes. Nope, not Russia. Not Russia. The French. France was the first people from Europe to settle there. 
There were Native Americans long before the French showed up. And this is not the area that the Vikings were in. They were in the eastern part of Canada more. Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, Labrador. They were first settled by French. That by the French. That's why it's Quebec. It is a French word. And it is pronounced Quebec in French. Now, the second largest city in Canada is located here. Anybody remember what the largest city in Canada was? from yesterday. What's the largest city in Canada? Largest city in Canada. Yes. Toronto. Anybody remember what the second largest is based on your reading? I'll give you a hint. Expos. Yes, sir. Montreal in French. Yes. Montreal in English. In French, they would call it Montreal, which would be translated sort of as the Royal Mountain. Montreal is Canada's second largest city. In terms of the economy, in terms of what people do to make money in Quebec, most of it is manufacturing, which means what again? On the count of three, if you need to refresh your memory, look at your notes, but on the count of three, please tell me what manufacturing means. One, two, three. Making things is right, and I'm going to give you a new word because it's not only manufacturing, but it is something called service industries. Service industries. Most people in Quebec, or the majority of Quebec's wealth, comes from manufacturing and service industries service industries. Anybody know? What are service industries? What do they do? Or just give me examples of service industries. Yes. Hair salons, yeah. Restaurants, yeah. Very good. Any others? Okay, yeah, it's someone or something that is providing a service, such as a maid, a handyman, a doctor, a teacher. I'm providing a service. I'm not making anything, but I'm providing you with a service. Yeah, service industries, providing service to people. That's basically what they deal with. Banks are service industries. Hospitals are service industries. Stores are service industries. Do we have that in the United States? Do we have service industries here? Yeah. Just a show of hands, how many of your parents would work in a service industry, in a store, in a bank, in a hospital, in a school, something not making things or growing things, basically? That is typical for the United States. The majority of people are in the service industry. So there's Quebec. What do we see next? If we're in the Quebec and Ontario region, we've done with Quebec. We're moving on to where? Ontario. That's right. Ontario is Canada's second largest province. The first one being Quebec. Ontario is the second largest province. First being Quebec, followed by Ontario. Ontario has the largest population in Canada. Quebec had how much of the population? One fourth, good. Ontario has even more than a quarter of the population of Canada. Plus, it is the richest area of Canada. Here you see Ontario. Hey, it borders Minnesota up here. It also has part of the Canadian Shield, but most of the people are down by the Great Lakes, by the St. Lawrence River Valley region and between the Great Lakes. It has the largest population, and it has the most wealth. 
Ontario is a rich province compared to the others in Canada. It's where most of the money is. Its main industry or its main part of the economy is manufacturing or making things. So much so that, if I go back to the map here, this area right here, that area is that big or small compared to the rest of Canada. Yeah, it's small. It produces more than half of everything that's made in Canada. More than half of all the goods manufactured in Canada are produced in Ontario. Many of you might have cars that are produced in Canada. Many of the car dealerships, like Ford, have plants, manufacturing plants, in southern Ontario. So they got manufacturing, that's a biggie. They also have things like banking, and hospitals, and restaurants, and stores. That is called what? Raise your hand if you can tell me. Those, that kind of industry where people provide a service to you. What was that called? What was that called? Yes. Service industry, good. Service industries are very important to Ontario. Service industries are very important to Ontario, just like they're very important to Minnesota and the United States. One last thing about Ontario is that it's home to the nation's capital. What is the capital of Canada? Oh, Canada. What is the capital of Canada? It's on your maps. You have to put a star by it on your maps. Uh, let's see here, the Senators, I believe, right? The Senators? What is the capital of Canada? Come on, I'm expecting more hands, especially since you can look at your maps. The capital of Canada is Ottawa, yes. Ottawa is Canada's national capital, just like in the United States, it's Washington, D.C. So, as a recap, we've gone from the eastern coast of Canada where it was predominantly fishing and changing to manufacturing, mining, and tourism, to Quebec with manufacturing and service industries, to Ontario with manufacturing and service industries. Now we're going to go a little farther west again to where you get the Great Plains. Remember from yesterday, the Great Plains starting in, in the United States and going up? We're gonna look at the prairie. Canada's prairie provinces and British Columbia is the last economic region that we will look at today. The prairie provinces and British Columbia. <coughs> Excuse me. Prairie provinces in British Columbia. What do you think we're going to start with? The prairie provinces, that's right. There's a method to my madness. The prairie provinces. Those would be Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta. Those are the prairie provinces. They're on the prairie, the Great Plains. What is going to be the main way people there make money? Raise your hand. Based on their geography, their physical geography, based on their landscape, how are they going to make money? On the prairie, the Great Plains, the roll, gently rolling inland grassy area with fertile soil. 
How are they going to make money? Yes. Yeah, they're going to grow crops and sell them. Anybody know the big fancy word for growing crops? Starts with an A. Big fancy word for growing crops. Starts with an A. And it is? What? If you combine both of your answers, you'll get it. It is agriculture. And primarily in this region, here you see the provinces. But since you have the Great Plains coming up, not quite over that far, but you have the Great Plains in here, agriculture, growing things, is the main. Come on. There we go. Agriculture is the main industry here. They grow a lot of wheat. Not so much corn. It's a little far north for decent corn production. But a lot of wheat, which they sell to other parts of the world. Like Europe and Asia, which you learned in the five themes note practice. Remember? In terms of movement. There's also something else that they got there. Has anybody ever been up in this region? Have you noticed anything along the roadsides or anything as you were, if you drove in that area? You don't remember? That's fine. Believe it or not, the Prairie Provinces also have a lot of oil and natural gas. Petro Canada has many wells there. So that area has a lot of oil and natural gas. Those are the Prairie Provinces. We got one left. One left and that is British Columbia. And there it is right there. Notice where it's located geographically. British Columbia. What landform do we have over there in British Columbia? What landform do we have over there? What landforms do we have in this area? We have mountains. Good. And so one of their industries is probably going to be related to those mountains. Just like we had the mountains on the other side here. What industry is going to happen? What can you do inside mountains? Yes. Mining is one. What grows on mountains? What grows on mountains? Like in the Rocky Mountains in the United States, what grows there? You normally don't grow wheat or corn there. What do you grow? Yeah. Grapes in certain climates, yes. You can grow grapes on the sides of mountains. Not necessarily there, though. In most mountains, what are you going to find? Trees. You're going to find trees. You don't grow sheep. You raise them. Yeah, yeah, but I asked, what do you grow? That's fine, that's fine, but it is a difference. So we're going to have timber, which is cutting down trees, getting wood, making wood from trees, and mining. All because you have mountains there. Because you have mountains there, you have the forests that grow on the mountains, and you have the ability to mine inside those mountains. Another industry based on its location. Think about where it's located, what it has a border with, or an edge with. What is another industry? Just like in the East, you told me there's going to be a certain industry because of where it was located. Think about British Columbia. Fishing, yes! Because it has the Pacific Ocean there. Fishing thanks to the Pacific. One other industry there that I can talk about because do lots of people like do people like to look at mountains? What else can you do in, in mountains? 
besides looking at them and digging into them. What else can you do? You can ski, go animal watching, you can climb them, snowboard. You can do all those things, right? What would that be called? What industry, what part of the economy would all those parts be called? Tourism, yeah. People want to go there and have fun. Maybe go hiking. Go look at the parks. They have national parks there. Not our nation. And last but not least, Canada's main Pacific port is located in British Columbia. City that most of the stuff from Asia gets shipped into. So all those TVs and VCRs and things, DVD players, Blu-ray, all of those things going into Canada, coming from Asia, have to go through one city, and that is Vancouver. Vancouver is Canada's main Pacific port. It is the access to the rest of the world in Asia. So ladies and gentlemen, we've gone through all the economic regions of Canada. We have done all that we need to do for Section 5-1. Are there any questions on today's stuff? Yes, sir. Why is there a microphone on me? Because I record the stuff that I do up on the screen and then put it on the web for people that are absent so that they can get their notes a different way if they need to. Okay. Sometimes it takes a while. This is the first year I'm doing it, and this is only the second day that I'm doing it. Actually, third day. So I emailed parents about it, and it's up on my webpage, but that's what it's there for. So if there's no more questions about the economic regions of Canada, I will first stop the recording. <laughs>